Hey everyone, and welcome to adcreative.ai training course. I'm Emilio, and I'm excited to kick off this series with a full tutorial on how you can make the most out of the template builder. This feature is one of our most requested features ever, and after spending some time in beta, it's better than ever before. Before we dive into the tool, let's quickly cover who benefits from this feature and how some of our customers are using it today. This will go quickly, so let's get started. Who benefits from the template builder? Many of our customers use the template builder to replicate their ads and efficiently resize them across different formats. This allows them to use their favorite ad templates for all of their products, automating the entire creation process and saving a lot of time. Additionally, other brands use this tool to create their go-to social media templates, making as many variations as they need. This efficiency is crucial, especially for brands posting multiple times per day. But now let's jump into the tool to understand how you can get started. To begin, the first thing we'll do is navigate to our desired brand. In this case, we'll be using adcreative.ai. Once we've selected our brand, the next step is to press create a project. From there, we'll scroll down until we reach custom templates. After clicking on custom templates, we'll be directed to the homepage of this feature. Now that we're on the custom templates homepage, we can either use the existing template or create a new one. Since we're building a new template today, we'll click on template builder. At this point, a new page will appear, allowing us to choose our preferred sizes. You can select anywhere from one size to multiple sizes for your project. Moving forward, you'll see that we have a preset size options, such as post, landscape, story, and others. If none of these fit your needs, you can scroll down until you reach your custom sizes. To create a custom size, simply put the width and the height. For example, I'll enter 1000 times 1000 and click add size. This will make the custom size appear at the bottom of the list. Once we've selected the sizes we want to work with, we'll click the use selected sizes button in the top right corner. Now we're taking into the canvas where we can see all the sizes we've selected. Here we have full creativity control to do whatever we'd like to do with these canvases. Before diving in, let me give you a quick look at the control bar on the left side of the screen. This control bar includes the following tools, the select button, the image button, the shapes button, the text button, the call to action button, and the logo button. Let's break these tools down one by one. First, we have the select button. This is used to select any element on the canvas, whether it's an image, text, or shape. Next, we have the image button. This gives us access to our image library and the iStock library, where we can search for any image we want. We also have the option to upload a new image by clicking upload an image or by dragging it directly onto the canvas. Then we have the shapes button. This opens up a library of different shapes for us to use. Just click the one you want and it will appear on the canvas. If needed, you can also upload custom shapes. Now let's move on to the text button. Here we can choose from different text boxes, heading, subheading, or small text. Click to add them to the canvas and resize them to fit your needs. Following that, we have the call to action button. This provides a variety of CTA buttons and you can customize them by removing icons or adjusting the design to your liking. Finally, we have the logo button. This allows us to access the logo we uploaded when creating the brand. You can choose to surround the logo with a shape or turn off the dynamic field and select an alternate logo that you uploaded earlier. With the left side controls explained, let's shift our attention to the top of the screen. Here, you'll see the layers of the elements currently on the canvas. You can adjust which elements sit on top or underneath others, depending on your design needs. Additionally, you can add more sizes to your project, just like we did at the beginning. To wrap up this section, let me highlight one final tool, the score mode button. This brand new feature scores your creative based on millions of data points and gives you actionable advice to improve it. Now, let me walk you through an example of how to create a template. First things first, we need to choose an image. This means we'll go to the image button pick the image we want, and then resize it to fit our canvas. Next, we'll add a headline by going to the text button, selecting heading, and resizing the text box as needed. After that, we'll return to the text button to add a punchline. I'll select subheading, resize the text box, and adjust it to fit the design. As you can see, I've left the dynamic field on for both text boxes. This allows us to edit them later in the project setup by linking them to tags. Our headline tag is headline and the punchline tag is punchline. I've also left the dynamic field on for the image. To complete the template, we'll add a logo and a call to action button. The call to action will be dynamic while the logo will not. Since we've chosen to work with multiple sizes, 
we now need to apply our template to each canvas. To do this, we'll press the select button and select everything that we've added to the first canvas. Then we'll copy the elements by pressing command C on the keyboard. Next, we'll click on the next canvas and press command V to paste the elements. You may need to adjust the design slightly to fit the new canvas size. Once we're happy with our design, we can press score mode. Here, we'll choose the brand adcreative.ai and name the template. For this example, I'll call it adcreative.ai add. After that, we press save to select the brand. The AI will then score our creative based on millions of ads and data points. For instance, our creative might score 72% for performance and 73% for awareness based on 340 data points and a data set of 450 million ads. We can also activate the eye tracking heat map and view advice on how to improve our score. At this point, we have the option to follow the advice and improve our creative, or we can finalize it. To finish, press close and then save in the top right corner. This will bring us back to the home screen of the custom templates feature. Now that we've created the template, let's put it to use. First, select the template we just created and press next step. From here, you'll choose between cross match or direct match. Cross match pairs every text with every image, while direct match pairs them one to one. For this example, we'll go with direct match. Next, we'll decide what's written in our headline, punchline, and call to action button for each variation. Once we've made our decisions, click next step. Now, we'll choose the images for our variations. For the first variation, I'll select this image. For the second variation, I'll use a different image. When we're ready, let's give the project a name. Let's call it demo and then we click Generate. Just a quick reminder, we were able to customize the images and text because we enabled dynamic fields when we built the template. If we hadn't, we would have been locked into using the same images and text we placed on the canvas earlier. And there you have it. You've successfully generated two variations of our ad. Now, let's see how they perform.